Next question we're going to look at as we do advanced integration techniques is how to do we integrate a product of trig functions. And the short answer is we have to get creative with manipulating the trig functions to get them into a format that we can do integration, either by regular substitution or integration by parts. So first, we're going to talk about taking the integral of the cosine to some power of x times the sine to some power of x dx. And the first case we're going to look at is if either has an odd exponent. If j or k are odd. Our strategy we'll employ here is we will rewrite the odd exponent by pulling one out and use the fact that either cosine squared of x is 1 minus sine squared of x, or similarly, sine squared of x is 1 minus cosine squared of x. So here's what that looks like. For example, if we want to integrate the cosine cubed of x sine squared of x dx, if, e if both of them are odd, we can pick on either sine or cosine. It doesn't matter. If only one of them are odd, that's where we're going to focus our attention. So here we see that the cosine is odd. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull one of the cosines out. And that leaves behind. If we pulled one out, there were three. It leaves two cosine squared of x behind. When we do that, we can grab the cosine that's got the even exponent and use our cosine right triangle property. When we make that substitution, we'll have the cosine of x times cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared of x times still the sine squared of x dx. And now if I distribute that sine through, we end up with, let's put the sine stuff first, a sine squared x minus a sine to the fourth x times, we still have that cosine x dx on the outside. But what's nice about this is if we make u equal to the sine of x, this is going to simplify really quickly, du being its derivative cosine x dx. And so we have the integral of u squared minus u to the fourth du, which we know is 1 third u to the third minus 1 fifth u to the fifth. Or substituting back is 1 third sine cubed x minus 1 fifth sine to the fifth x, of course, plus the constant. And we found our integral. So our general strategy, if either one has an odd exponent, is we'll pull out one of them and then change the other one to uh, using that tr tr right triangle trig identity of 1 minus sine squared or 1 minus cosine squared. And that'll make it into something we can do a basic u substitution with. Now, if we aren't so lucky and they both have even exponents, we need a slightly different strategy. If they both have even exponents, our strategy will be to use our trig properties. Two of them specifically, the first one being that the sine squared of x is equal to 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2x 
or that cosine squared of x is equal to 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x. Those substitutions will allow us to find something we can actually take the antiderivative of. So let's try an example. Let's do the integral of sine squared x cosine squared x dx. Both of them have even exponents. We're going to use these properties on both of them, both the sine squared and the cosine squared. And when we do, sine squared becomes 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2x. Cosine squared becomes 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x dx. Let's go ahead and multiply this out. You'll notice we have a difference of squares here, a sum and a difference. So that's going to be 1 fourth minus 1 fourth cosine squared of 2x dx. Problem is, we again have a cosine with an even exponent. This just means we have to do the formula over again. So we've got the integral of 1 fourth minus 1 fourth times. And we'll use our formula for cosine squared, which is 1 half plus 1 half times the cosine of. And then we double our angle for x dx. If I distribute that 1 fourth through, notice we'll end up with 1 fourth minus 1 eighth at the beginning. 1 fourth minus 1 eighth is 1 eighth minus 1 eighth cosine of 4x dx. And now I have something that I can actually take the integral of. That's going to give us 1 eighth x minus, we can either use u substitution, or you might see the pattern coming, that it's 1 over 32 sine of 4x plus a constant. And so if they're both even exponents, we have to use these trig properties to make it into something that we can play with. And sometimes we have to use these properties over and over again as the expression gets longer and longer. But we still end up with something that we can quite nicely take the integral of. So sines and cosines. If the exponents, one of the exponents is odd, we can pull one of those exponents out. If they're both even, we use the trig properties. Let's look at a second product. This one takes a little bit more decision making. And that is finding the integral of the tangent to some exponent of x times the secant of some exponent of x dx. This is another one we have to commonly solve. First, because these integrals aren't as common, let's do a little recall. First, that the integral of secant squared x dx, we know that one to be tangent of x plus a constant. It's just the basic antiderivative rule. Also, the integral of secant x tangent x dx, that is the antiderivative of secant x plus a constant. And using uh, substitution, we've gotten really good at taking the derivative, or I'm sorry, the antiderivative of the tangent of x dx. Change it to sine over cosine, and then use u substitution, and we end up with the natural log of the secant of x plus a constant. And I'm going to give you one more, the integral of secant of x dx. Turns out if you multiply top and bottom by secant x plus tangent x, you get a nice little substitution that results in us getting the natural log of the secant of x plus the tangent of x plus a constant. So we're going to use those formulas throughout our work here as we work with tangent times secant. First thing I'll look at when I'm doing one of these problems is I want to know about the secant. First, if the secant is even, 
and greater than or equal to 2. So the secant has an even exponent. I don't care about the tangent. What I will do is I will rewrite the secant to the j power of x. I'll pull out a secant squared. So we'll have secant to the j minus 2 of x times the secant of x, secant squared of x, sorry. And then I will use the fact that secant squared of x is equal to tangent squared of x plus 1 to write the secant to the j minus 2 of x in terms of the tangent of x. The idea is if I can keep the secant squared and make everything else into a tangent of x, then I can use u substitution where u is tangent and du is the secant squared bit that we've pulled out. So let's look at an example where we do just that. Let's do the integral of tangent to the fourth x secant to the fourth x dx. And I notice that secant is even. So because the secant is even, I'm going to pull out a secant squared. Tangent fourth x, when we pull out a secant squared, we're left with secant squared. And the goal is to hold on to the secant squared x and change the other one to be tangents so we can use a u substitution. So when we do that, the secant squared becomes tangent squared plus 1 times the other secant squared x dx that we're holding on to. This looks similar to the sine cosine problem we did, because now we have the integral of tangent to the sixth x plus tangent to the fourth x all times secant squared of x dx. And now we're ready to do our substitution. Because now if u is equal to the tangent of x, its derivative is the last part, the secant squared x dx, just like we wanted. Because now it simplifies just u to the sixth plus u to the fourth du, which is a very easy integral to take, u to the seventh times 1 seventh plus u to the fifth times 1 fifth plus a constant. Then we just substitute back to our tangents, because u is tangent of x. So we have 1 7th tangent to the 7th x plus 1 5th tangent to the 5th x plus a constant. And so if the secant is even, it will come out really nicely by pulling out a secant squared and changing everything else into tangents. Now, if the secant is not even, we're going to bring our attention to the tangent. First, if the tangent is odd and there is no secant, we're just taking some integral of tangent to some odd power. What we will do is we will rewrite the tangent to the k of x by pulling out a tangent squared. It gives us tangent to the k minus 2 of x times tangent squared of x. The reason we'll do that is we can play with that tangent squared of x. And we have tangent to the k minus 2 times that tangent squared is secant squared x minus 1. And then if I distribute the tangent through, we end up with tangent to the k minus 2 times secant squared of x minus tangent to the k minus 2 of x. 
The goal here is we want to reduce down until that tangent of k minus 2 becomes just tangent to the first power. Because we know the antiderivative of tangent is the natural log of the secant. However, sometimes we're not going to be quite there yet. So we may need to repeat. the process again with this new tangent of an odd power. And we'll use the same process and the same formula to reduce tangent down by 2 again and tangent down by 2 again until tangent is finally reduced down to a first power. So for example, if we want the integral of tangent to the fifth x dx, we'll pull out a tangent square. So what's left is tangent cubed of x. And then that tangent squared becomes secant squared of x minus 1 times the remaining tangent cubed of x dx. Now, like before, we're going to distribute the tangent cubed through. And that's going to give us the integral of secant squared x tangent cubed x minus the tangent cube of x dx. Now, in the first part, I want to notice we're all set up for a substitution. If I make u equal to the tangent, du is secant squared, and that comes out really nicely. However, the next part is not so nice because we have tangent cubed. Tangent is still odd, and we don't know the integral of tangent cubed. So we're going to repeat this process again, just manipulating that tangent cube using the same process. So now we have the integral of secant squared x tangent cubed x minus pull out a tangent squared x times tangent x dx. Again. We're going to pick on that tangent squared, change it into secants. So we have the integral of secant squared x tangent cubed x minus tangent is secant squared x minus 1 times tangent of x dx. Again, we're going to distribute through. And that will give us the integral of secant squared x tangent cubed x minus secant squared x tangent of x minus tangent of x dx. Actually, plus tangent of x dx, distributing the negative through as well. Being careful avoiding sign errors. All right, now we're ready to actually solve this. To help us solve this, we're going to break it into three integrals dx and solve each one individually. First, if we make u equal to the tangent of x and du equal to its derivative, secant squared x dx, this first integral becomes the integral of u cubed du which is equal to 1 fourth u to the fourth, which when we substitute back, we get 1 fourth times tangent to the fourth x. Similarly, on the second integral, if we make u equal to the tangent of x and du is equal to the secant squared of x dx, we end up with the integral of u dx, or du which is equal to 1 half u squared. Bringing down our sign, we are subtracting 1 half times u is tangent of x, so tangent squared of x. Bringing down our sign of plus. And we know from our formulas, the antiderivative of tangent of x is the natural log of the secant of x plus a constant.
And so that took a little bit more work. But the pattern in process was quite simple and straightforward. We pull out a tangent squared, change it to secants. See if we still have to pull out a tangent squared, change it to secant, and keep going until you finally get down to just an integral of tangent. Now, that's if there's no secant at all. If there is a secant, we're going to take a slightly different approach. Instead of making u tangent, we're going to make u into secant. Here's what it looks like. Number four. So we've got an odd tangent with a secant. Our strategy is to rewrite tangent to the k of x, secant to the j of x by pulling out a tangent and a secant, because tangent secant is the derivative of secant. So if we pull one tangent out, we're left with tangent to the k minus 1. Pull one secant out, we have secant to the j minus 1 of x on both of those times tangent x secant x. Then we can use the fact that tangent squared of x is secant squared of x minus 1 to get rid of all the tangents so that we only have secant left to write the tangent to the k minus 1 of x. We don't want that in terms of secant. So odd tangent without secant, we try and change We try to have a secant squared. Odd tangent with a secant, we try to have a tangent secant. Here's what it looks like. The integral of tangent cubed of x times secant to the seventh power of x dx. We've got an odd tangent hanging out with secants. As we discussed, we're going to pull out a secant and a tangent. So when we pull out a tangent, we'll have a tangent squared x left. When we pull out a secant, we'll have a secant to the sixth x left with our tangent x secant x pull out dx. Then what we can do is take our tangent squared and rewrite it using the fact that tangent squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. So that's going to give us the integral of secant squared x minus 1 times secant to the sixth x times tangent x secant x dx. And just as in the other examples, when we distribute that secant squared, we'll be able to use a u substitution. So we have the integral of secant to the eighth power x minus secant to the sixth power of x times tangent x secant x dx. And now we're set up for our u substitution where u is that secant x, and du, its derivative, is what we pulled out to set ourselves up. Tangent x secant x dx. So that's going to give us the integral of u to the eighth minus u to the sixth du, which we can quickly take to be 1 ninth times u to the ninth minus 1 seventh times u to the seventh plus a constant. Switching back to our secant x, because u is secant x, we have 1 ninth secant to the ninth of x minus 1 seventh secant to the seventh of x plus a constant. And so if we have an odd tangent with the secant, what we can do is pull out a secant and tangent and then change everything else into secants. The one case that we haven't looked at yet is the one we prefer the least, because this one can get ugly fast. 
And that's if the tangent is even and the secant is odd. Because if the tangent is odd, we can either rewrite it with all secants and its derivative or all tangents and its derivative, depending on whether or not we have a secant with it. If the secant is even, we can rewrite it so that we have a secant squared and then change everything to tangents. That's what we've done in all the previous examples. But when the tangent is even and the secant is odd, what we will do is we will use the fact that tangent squared of x is equal to secant squared of x minus 1 to write the tangent to the k of x power in terms of secant x. What that will allow us to do is use integration by parts, which is what we got good at doing in our last video. So let's look at one last example. Let's do the integral of the secant x times the tangent squared of x dx. And as you can see, the secant is odd, first power. The tangent is even, second power. So let's take that tangent squared and rewrite it. So we have the integral of secant x times secant squared x minus 1 dx distributing through. We end up with the integral of secant cubed of x minus secant of x dx. Now, if I write that as two integrals, the second integral, secant of x, we know is the natural log of secant plus tangent. But the secant cubed needs a little bit more work. So here's what we can do with that secant cubed. We're going to pull out a secant x, which leaves behind a secant squared x dx. That's going to give us something we can use integration by parts, because the derivative of secant is easy. And the antiderivative of secant squared is easy. We'll use integration by parts to work out this piece. Remember, we still have to do minus. And let's go ahead and take this integral. The integral of secant is the natural log of secant x plus tangent x plus a constant. But we're going to focus our attention with u being the secant of x and the dv being the secant squared of x dx. When we do that, du, the derivative of secant is secant x tangent x dx. v, the antiderivative of secant squared, is tangent of x. And so that integral becomes u times v secant x tangent x minus the integral of v du tangent x times secant tangent. Let's put the secant first. Secant x tangent squared of x dx minus, we still have the natural log of secant x plus tangent of x plus a constant. Well, it doesn't seem like we're getting any closer because we still have an odd secant and an even tangent on that derivative. However, if you notice, that integral is the original integral we tried to solve for. We learned with integration by parts, we just set that equal to what we're looking for, secant x times tangent squared x dx and solve this algebraic expression for the integral. We'll add that to the other side. That'll give us two of them. So now we have secant x tangent x minus the natural log of secant x plus tangent of x plus a constant is equal to two of these integral secant x tangent squared x dx 
get rid of the 2, we'll multiply by 1 half on both sides. And that gives us a final answer of 1 half times secant x tangent x minus the natural log of secant x plus tangent of x plus a constant is equal to the integral we're looking for, secant x tangent squared of x dx. And we found our solution. So with these products of tangents and secants, or sines and cosines, we really need to pay attention to the exponents and how we can manipulate that exponent to give us something that we can use u substitution on, ideally. Or in this last case, if we can't, because we've got an even tangent and an odd secant, we'll set it up to get integration by parts. These take a lot of practice to get used to the different situations, the different cases. So please take the time tonight to practice these. We'll see you in class to discuss them further.